homeschooling is going on, but hopefully, hello Facebook, hello YouTube, welcome to Makeup Makeover Monday. Uh, if you're watching me live, you are super welcome. I've got Amy, I think, in the house today. Amy's my digital editor, so she will be on Facebook. So I hope that uh, everybody there will enjoy the chat. Amy, of course, can pop links up. We can't link on Instagram, but if you're watching me on Facebook, then the things that I talk about will hopefully magically pop up, thanks to Amy. So hopefully um, that will be a good thing on Facebook. And YouTube, of course, will do links afterwards, so you will be able to click through. Hello, everybody. Hi, Nicola. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Cecilia, lovely to see you there. Um, Instagram, of course, welcome to all my new followers. If you're here for the first time, I do my lives on Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays, uh, live at lunchtime, and then I post them onto IGTV so you can watch them on Catch Up, which I know lots of you do in the evening or after work or perhaps first thing in the morning, the following day with a cup of tea in bed. Oh, sounds good, doesn't it? Uh, but we can't link, obviously, on Instagram. So what I do on Instagram is if you go to my bio, you'll see a little line of blue text It says link tree. And if you click on that, that gives you all the links, hopefully to everything that I talk about. And then if all else fails, you just go to lizellwellbeing.com because that is the mothership of all my information. So that's where you'll find all my downloads and links to podcasts and articles and recipes and offers and you name it, it's all there. In fact, talking of offers, we have so many Liz Loves discount codes running now. I just can't keep track of them all. So what we did over the weekend, you'd be really impressed. We collated them all together and they're on the Liz Our Wellbeing website. Uh, Amy, you might pop a link up especially just to that page. If you go to Liz Loves, well, they're all there in alphabetical order. So you just have to scroll down and then you'll find them all. And it says, you know, how long they're running for and what the percentage is. It's usually sometimes 10, 15, 20% even off in some cases. So really worth grabbing those uh, while they are active. Right, now on Friday, those of you who joined me with my lovely flowers and fashion, it was a bit of a feel good fashion floral Friday. I mentioned this amazing thing, which I tried just before I get into my makeup. Um, and and this is a Lumi lamp, absolutely love it. And it's a little radio as well, which is why um, it's got its aerial there. And what it does is the way it's got this light on it here is it slowly wakes you up. So it wakes you up like the natural sunrise and you can set it for between 15 and 60 minutes, I think. Um, anyway, as you know, if you're watching my Instagrams, I do have a bit of a struggle with one of my teens in particular, who shall remain nameless, Kit, in getting up in the morning to do homeschooling. So I gave him this on Friday afternoon. I said, right, Kit, you set it up. And he has it now for half an hour. And honestly, I saw him this morning. I said, how do you feel? Because he was up quite early for school. And he said, I feel so much brighter and more alert because I haven't been kind of just jolted into waking up with the alarm. But it just naturally in your brain starts to recognise, oh, it's beginning to be daylight. Maybe I need to think about getting up now. And, you know, the funnest thing is you can set it so it comes on with your radio or whatever. But you can also set it to come on with loads of different sounds. And he set it to come on to the sound of goats. Yeah. There you go, goats. So he is now waking up <laughs> like a goat herder at dawn. Isn't that fun? Anyway, I just had to share it with you. I think we do have a link for it because there are lots of different ones. I think, Amy, you can pop it on Facebook and there's a link on the Instagram uh, link tree if you'd like to take a look at it. Whoops, ooh, just dropped it, Never mind. I think it looked very robust, I think. Uh, the other thing before we get going is, yes, I am sitting here completely fresh-faced, um, so dying to put some makeup on in just a moment with the lovely Rupert. But one of the things that over the last few months has really changed my skin, and bear in mind that, you know, we've been in lockdown now, on and off, haven't we, for the best part of a year, so I haven't had a facial for I don't know how long, is the amazing Cell Return Mask. Now, these are expensive bits of kit and they are imported exclusively from South Korea. They're NASA technology by my eldest daughter, Lily, who is a bit of a beauty techie, as those of you who've seen me together with her. 
and you know proud mother talking here because she's she's just been in vogue they've been raving about it she was doing interviews all last week with some of the Sunday supplements you know so we're going to be seeing a lot more about this anyway we had a Liz Loves offer code obviously because she's my daughter and it expired. So I said to her, look, honey, I'm going to be sitting, talking to the nation with no makeup on, and I really want to rave about my skin. Um, could we please extend the offer? So she's extended it. I think it's just one more week. So, and, and they already have a small discount on the website already. So you get double discount. So just use Liz Loves at cellreturnuk.com. That's what it looks like. And that's what I wear every night when I go to sleep. I just tap it on. And these little lights, there's over a thousand of them. It's the most powerful one on the market. It really is extraordinary. It doesn't flicker, by the way. It just flickers because you're watching it through a screen. Um, so that's the one I use. Red light is rejuvenating. So, you know, I'm barely even having to use any skincare these days. It's quite extraordinary. Um, and then you can press the button and it goes into blue mode. And blue mode, I don't tend to use blue mode, but I've got others in my family who are using it because blue mode is for acne and spot clearing and it's highly antibacterial so the whole thing is super clean super hygienic i mean it is just genius and then the third one is pink if you can see that again it doesn't flash in real life it's just the lights on the phone doing that and pink is anti-inflammatory and so for anybody with psoriasis or eczema rosacea it's the pink setting pink is also good for scarring and wound healing um, and i burnt my hand last week with some boiling water and I've been putting my hand under it so I'm going to reveal it after a little while to see because I want to see it test its wound healing properties and each one just does 20 minutes and then if you do the last one is fast mode and that's where it cycles through each of those settings for I think nine minutes and it is it is really great so as I say it's an expensive bit of kit but I genuinely would not be without it and I think just because We've got um, this last few days to grab the discount if you want it. CellReturnUK.com and full disclosure, Lily is my daughter. So moving on to makeup. Yeah, there are a lot on the market, but seriously, not as good as that one. I mean, it's like, I think it's at least 12 times more powerful than the nearest comparable one on the market. It's just about to get its medical license here in the, in the UK, so yeah. Anyway, oh and the other thing, sorry, big news, brand new on Cell Return, I haven't got one here to show you, but I'm gonna tell you about it, is they've got a helmet, it looks like a cycle helmet, and it's for hair, and it's for hair regrowth. And actually the company in Korea, South Korea, when they developed this technology, that was what they started with. And honestly, if you have somebody in your, in your household who's concerned about hair loss, far safer and cheaper than a hair transplant or you know anything invasive like that. It is extraordinary. The results are extraordinary. She's got people in the UK trialing it now. Uh, but the data is phenomenal. And it's a slightly different light wave. It uses near-infrared. So this is the only mask in the UK, I think, that has near-infrared as well as LED and it's different frequencies, and it's obviously different from the one that you have for your face, because obviously you don't want to grow hair on your face, do you? No, that's something that we don't want. So it's different technology, and it really is amazing. I'm gonna have to get her here back, um, perhaps you know, with some other people when we're allowed to, to actually look at the regrowth of hair, because it is extraordinary. And the Liz Loves Code does also work on that helmet. So check it out if you or somebody in your family has that as an issue. Right, on to the main event. Ha, huh, hopefully my Instagram is going to split the screen. Fingers crossed, Delilah Cosmetics. I've sent the request. Here's hoping, I, as I said, I've chucked everybody off the Wi-Fi. Um, now, obviously on Facebook, you won't be able to see Rupert. That's only on Instagram, because that's the only way I can split the screen, but hopefully you will be able to hear him. Good morning. Can you hear me? Hello? I can hear you. Can you hear me? <laughs> There's always that minute of worry, isn't there? Where you Is think, it going to work? Is it going to work? <laughs> Are they going to be able to hear me? I can hear you really well. Yeah, lovely to see you. Same. Really lovely to see you and lovely, lovely to meet you, even if it's not in real life. Tell us, where are you at the moment? I am 
in uh, a rather snowy Marlow in Buckinghamshire. Okay. Um, I've actually popped into to the office, Liz. Um, we, of course, are locked down, so most of the team are working from home. Yeah. Um, but I need to pop in, pick up some bits and pieces, pick up the post, yeah. um, switch all the heating on. As you there's do. There's a really nice ring light here as well. Oh, it's very important. Lighting Good the, lighting. So I'm in the office. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's so really I'm, nice. I'm in the office in Marlow for a change. Very nice to see you. I'm in the West Country. We don't yet have snow. It is flipping cold. Oh, my goodness. Isn't it? Really I cold. So I, I, I'm, I'm huddled, up, huddled up to a, a, a heater here right, right next to me. I'm not surprised. <laughs> but, um, Today's but... the perfect day to be in and play with makeup. <laughs> exactly, right? Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So tell us about so, your I'm, your I'm, background because you have been yeah, okay. in the makeup industry for such a long time, haven't you? Mm, yeah, it's funny, isn't it? When you do account, you've been you know for a while. I was saying, oh, I've been a makeup artist for, for over fifteen years, and then one day I stopped and counted it, and I thought oh, it's getting closer to twenty five. I mean, mm. I, I I trained at the London College of Fashion back in the early nineties. Um, before being a makeup artist was a thing. Yeah. Um, and I trained to do uh, television, films, special effects, uh, wig making, beard making, and that was what um, makeup artist training looked like back in the 90s. You, you learned to do absolutely everything. Yeah. Um, and so my very first job when I left London College Fashion was at, on, at Thames Television on the bill, making up policemen um, many, <laughs> many years ago. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, we would arri- I would arrive at. I would arrive at. Uh, the studios in Wimble- was in Wimbledon. We would arrive at five o'clock in the morning, and as a makeup junior, I would do. Back in the day, women police officers used to wear their hair in a pleat with a little police hat on top. Um, I, I don't think that's a thing anymore. So, as a junior makeup artist, I would spend all morning with a, a queue of. Uh, at, female actors, and I would be putting their hair up in a pleat, right. ready for them to kind of wander, wander around in the, in the background. Oh. So that was my, yeah, that was my first job in hair and makeup. Um, and then I worked, after that, I worked uh, for a creative agency, as, as many makeup artists do. It was a hair and makeup photography agency, and mm. with that agency I started assisting, um, and then was lucky enough to start doing sort of London Fashion Week, and, and fashion photo yeah. shoots, and beauty shoots, and things. And why, why um, makeup? I mean, I'm seeing some questions here on Instagram. By the way, apologies if I'm a bit blurry. Hopefully, uh, Rupert's in focus. Am I on fo- in focus oh, I on... Not. Well, I like to be blurry too. Blurry yeah. <laughs> no, I, I get to be blurry. <laughs> um, I, I, Facebook hopefully is not uh, blurry, but I think it's when we have to split the screen, it's right. kind of out right. of my control, sadly. But I, I think I'm sharp on Facebook, so you might want to listen it's on Instagram. Like, and... it's, like a, it's like a soft focus, it's like those 80s soft focus. Focus Love it. Vaseline it's over the really lens, great. brilliant. We'll it's not deliberate, I promise. <laughs> Yeah, why, why makeup? Because, I mean, I, I read somewhere, I think I was when I was doing my uh, little bit of background research on you, which I, of course, do with all my guests, I read that you had gone into Screenface in Notting Hill, which was one of my favourite shops, like, 30 years ago. It was, like, one of the very few places you could go. That's exactly but, right. you know, but what drew you in there in the first place? I was doing... So I come from a painting and colouring background. You know, I was very strong at art at school, and it was an A-level art project that, that I was doing. Uh, and it was going to be a photography project, and I needed to uh, do some body painting on the person I was going to photograph. And somebody said to me, if you need body paint, you need to go to this, this shop, and you'll be able to buy this specialist makeup. So I walked into... And, and back then, it was just this tiny little shop. I remember. And there were prosthetic noses and ears and beards and glitter and, and I, I thought this is a job you know what how wonderful how, how exciting um so uh, yeah I, I i finished my A level art i did an art foundation course in order for me to get onto the course at the london college of fashion which was only one of the only courses in the world where you could go and do um specialist and, and, and media makeup mm. and i think my intention at the time was probably to go into film and television uh but i was 
just is so taken with the London College of Fashion and yeah. had a lot of friends on the fashion course and, and just I, I was good at it. I, I was I was good yeah. at doing sort of makeup for fashion and beauty. I I, I love the creative side of it. Yeah. I love I love people. I'm a nosy parker. So yeah. I, I, you know, it's lovely to get people in the chair. Um yeah. I had a little bit of a head, hairdressing background when I was 14, 15 years old and all my friends had paper rounds, I was working in a hairdressing salon, right. um, which I can thoroughly recommend, by the way, because on a day like today, when it, all the paper was about delivering the paper oh. in the snow, yeah. I was snug and warm. With a nice hot hairdryer and a pair of tongs. Serving hair, <laughs> serving cappuccinos. And yeah, so, you know, I had a little bit of a hairdressing background as well. So, I, you know, it yeah. just kind of progressed. And before you know it, you look up and you are doing, yeah, I mean, what I was doing was, was, mm. was make up for sort of fashion and beauty, really, which and then, I love. And tell me about Delilah, because how long has it been going and when did you start it and what's it all about? Because I'm so impressed, I have to say. Thank you. I, I've only Thank recently you. got to know your brand and it's a British brand. Yeah. The colours yes. and the packaging are beautiful. You know, what was Thanks. what was the setup behind it? So I had um, I, I had been doing creative direction on shoots, and, and so I did get involved with brands and a little bit doing product development, just on a consultancy basis, because I had had a uh, makeup background and I'd done some creative direction. So I kind of cut my teeth working with some of the bigger brands and some small independent brands doing product development with them. And it was about 2000, well, we launched in 2014, but, but at the time, and still now, there is a serious lack of British colour cosmetics brands. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I just felt like, yeah, you know, there, there weren't many brands that were representing that, that sort of British ideal of kind of something simple, something beautiful, something done really, really well. Um, so, uh, yeah, we set it up. My business partner is my wife. Julia, oh, uh, isn't that lovely? Uh, yeah, it is. And it works. It's, Actually, when it, it works, doesn't. it's great. <laughs> and when it doesn't, it's awful. <laughs> it, it does work, yeah. It does work. <laughs> I, I, I'm so, so, I'm just, I, I keep missing all the comments down here, but someone's looked, said, I look like Joe Wicks' older brother. I will take that. Yeah, I will absolutely cool. take that. I, I've got locked down hair and beard at the minute, so... Uh, which my wife is loving, by the way. I'm not allowed to. I'm not allowed to cut my hair or beard at the moment. Yeah, I no, I'm. I'm she's... loving the hair. That is. That is super cool. <laughs> she's enjoying super me cool. looking like a Viking. <laughs> Uh, everybody on Instagram is going to have to go and have a little look, I think, <laughs> or at least. And actually, you're you're quite shy because when I looked at your website, there isn't anything on there about you or about your background. Okay, right. So, so good point. So, so first off, um, so we're a completely independent brand. It's it's owned by me and uh, and Julia and a couple of the other founders as well. And we do everything ourselves. Brilliant. Um, which which I love. We built a brand new website just, um, mm. and I had a I had. You know, quite quite a lot to do with that. Um, I I do a Tips Tuesday on our own Instagram every couple of weeks. I'll, I'll do a little bit of Great. a video, um, ju just about some tips and recommendation. Um, which, uh, yeah, it's I, I don't feel uncomfortable about it. I just the brand was never about me. Delilah yeah. was never about Rupert Kingston, right? Which is why it's called Delilah. Why um, is it called it, Delilah? Where, where where did that name come from? It's a lovely it's, name. So it was. We always wanted to have a sort of mysterious girl's name at the front of the brand. Okay. Right? It, it didn't. It wasn't about me or my career or any of the other founders at all. And the name Delilah just kind of invoked this i this kind of provocative idea of feeling empowered by feeling beautiful. Right? That mm. that great story from the Bible where where she yeah. Samson, you know, with God-given strength, his strength is in his hair. You've um, got to watch that hair then. I mean, she'll have it in the night, yeah, won't she? Exactly, yeah. Lock up your but, scissors. You know, that idea that, that he was undefeatable until he saw Delilah bathing in the moonlight, right? And then he gave yeah. up his secret to her, you know. And then, of course, the, what, that wonderful song by Tom Jones. Love another it. Another story about him being obsessed with a woman, you know, and there's that lovely song by... By the plain white tees, Hey There Delilah, a beautiful song, a true story, where the lead singer wrote a song about a girl he met at a gig, and he never saw her again, but he just couldn't stop thinking about her. 
So the name just was this, for us, was this motif, this beautiful Love it. motif of uh, playful feminine empowerment. Mm. And then from a design point of view as well, there's, there's this lovely kind of symmetry to the name. Yeah, right, you're right. I don't know whether you can yeah. see it on there. Actually, I've, I've got something match that I can hold up. To our friends on Facebook, I love the colour. I mean, I'm a big fan of rose gold. Thank you. But yeah, Thank you. it's Thank you. really, really um, nice. So, let, let, so talk me through it. So I've got here, I don't normally use a primer. This is your primer. I'm going to pop some on. Why, why do we need to use a primer? What okay. looks right. like that? No, do you it's see? Great, it's a great question. Yeah, exactly. Just, just one or two pumps. Yeah, beautiful. Okay. So look, I think you probably don't use a primer, Liz, because you're probably quite good at preparing your skin for makeup, right? And I think those of us who have been in the industry a bit, we know how to prepare our skin before we put makeup on. And certainly a lot of makeup artists that I know and work with, they spend a lot of time preparing the skin so that the yeah. makeup goes on beautifully. Primer is the fast track to that, okay. right, in a tube, okay? And what it'll do is it's not a skincare product. What it will do is it'll sit on top of the skin, and it's a little layer that sits on top of the skin that your makeup sits on top of. Sometimes when we're a bit dehydrated, our skin tends to drink our yeah. makeup a little bit, right? So what you're left with the powder pigments that sit, that are sitting on top and your skin is drinking all the moisture out it of It goes makeup. patchy. Exactly that. So, mm. so primer will stop that. You've got that nice, nice. sandwich between your skin, sandwich. you've got a little layer of primer, cleanses off nice, nice and easily yeah. at the end of the day, and the makeup just floats on top. And you should be able to feel that lovely... Yeah, no, it feels great. Smooth. It does feel very silky as a good base. Thank and then you. this looks lovely. This is the pure light... The liquid radiance. Liquid radiance. And presumably this comes in other colours, does it, rather than just it one? Does, yeah. You've got, I think you've got uh, Luna. There, Luna, which is yeah. Peachy, yeah, uh, sort of Can white. Exactly, yeah. Okay, so Liz, a, a couple of dots. What I want you to do is just, just take a middle finger and just dot two or three up the cheek, two or three, and then just blend onto the cheek. Beautiful, beautiful. So and not all over my face. In. Yeah, now really blend it into your cheeks. Make sure it goes in. Oh, yeah, nice. Don't need to see Perfect. Same with the other side. Let that blend in. And I always say, put liquid illuminator underneath your foundation. Okay. I think liquid illuminator um, is something that women are scared of because they think it's this glittery liquid. It's, it's going to look too much. Yeah. Small amount, straight on top of your primer, and then buff your foundation over the top of it. And okay. I love the idea that the glow comes from underneath the foundation right that kind of lip from within glow that's a nice idea shimmer sitting on top of the skin. yeah okay yeah. so i'm going to pop a little bit of my foundation just over the top of that exactly buff that over the top i was watching your 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 five minute makeup makeup <laughs> video it looks yeah. lovely. No, it's really nice. i'm, yeah, I'm not I'm, I'm not a professional i'm always a bit nervous when i get yeah, watched yeah. <laughs> You know, I'm a really big advocate of simple makeup yeah. routines, right? So, so the makeup, obviously, that we would do for fashion and photo shoots could be very, very complicated. But mm. often I say to women, look, just put, pick four products that you love. You, know, you don't need to have lots and lots of products. You know, yeah. something great for the skin, something great for the cheeks, something on the eyes, the lips. Yeah. I'm a fan of, of doing something to the brows, and, and you're good to go. I, I, I really mm -hmm. like that idea mm -hmm. of being there. Now, what about these? These look absolutely amazing. These, Thank um, you. what are they? They are, it's called it's Sunset. A, it's a bronzer, but it just looks sunset. like a, it doesn't look like a scary orange bronzer. It's really no, no, subtle. No. So matte, 100% matte. That was, in, that was important to me. Too many okay. bronzers with too much shimmer in them. And again, you know, that shimmer on the surface of the skin for me always looks a bit like sandpaper. Do you know what I mean? You've got those kind of particles of glitter. Yeah. So something that's a little bit m more matte, um, okay. is a little bit softer, a little bit more forgiving, and as you say, no orange. No okay. orange. This one here is light medium. Light medium. Sunset, uh, that looks good. Which. I well, didn't know which colour to send you. Well, I don't know whether... I mean, I'm drawn towards light medium, but then there's also pure okay. light. That looks pretty, the luster. OK, pop that to one side for a second. Let's okay. Just just, just with, with your bronzer, mm -hmm. again, I would swing through the hairline first. Oh, really? So go, start up in the hairline there. Yeah, because that's where you Ooh. would tan, right? So if we were in the sun, you would tan up here first. Yeah, I would. So make sure you get some warmth right in the top of your forehead there. That's it. And I have never in my life done that before. That is a really great tip. 
There we go. Now you're just bringing back that sun kissed clone. Mm -hmm. Now on top of the cheekbones. So don't do the everyone does the funny fish thing where they go under mm -hmm. the cheekbones. Like, mm -hmm. Don't go under. Come up nice and high on the cheekbone there. Because okay. again, that's where the sun would catch your cheekbones, right? So Got start you. there. Working back more towards the hairline. Can anyone's tuning in now thinks I'm doing my makeup with you? I'm not. There's no makeup on this brush. <laughs> He's got a blank brush, okay. <laughs> it's nice to see you do it. Make sure I'm putting it in the right place. Getting an expert so demo. Where I, always, I always start with bronzer. We call that the back of the face, right? So, And then just with what's left on your brush. Now, if you want to bring someone to the bridge of the nose, the tip of the chin, anywhere else where you just want to add some warmth, yeah. So always start with the colour further back. You know, the big mistake that women do is they go in their bronzer, they go straight to the Yeah, apple. straight there. You don't and want you to do that. This kind of brown, this kind of brown cheek, right? Okay, that's looking good. And you're still, and we've still got the blurry haze as well. Excellent. Fantastic. I think I'm sharp though on Facebook. <laughs> good. The, so the luster, um, again, so this is just, if you, uh, uh, at the end of your makeup, it's you want to add a little color. bit more luminosity, that has like a, a peachy glow to it. So yeah. it's a little bit like a blush and a little bit like an illuminator. So Love now it. what you can do is you can go over the apple of the cheek and up onto the cheekbone a little bit. It's lovely. Okay. Yeah, lovely. And, and just sweep it all over. Um, that I, is I seriously nice, this one. Thank you. So Seriously, we're obsessive yeah. about formulation. Um, we're 100% cruelty-free. We've got 100% vegan this year as well. Wow. Um, yeah, it took a little bit of work to, to, to make sure that we weren't compromising formulation. Sure. Uh, but we, we, we were making something that had no animal byproducts in. Look at that. Lovely glow to the cheek. That. Yeah, that's nice. Really love it. Really Thanks. love it. Now, these, uh, do we move on to eyes? Yes, let's. So I've just opened what a box of tricks these are, these eyeshadow compacts. I was not expecting the wow that I got when I opened these. Look at them. Aren't they beautiful? Thank you. Absolutely beautiful. I mean, beautiful compact in themselves with a lovely clunk. Really important, the clunk. Um, really important, the clunk. But, you know, you've got shimmers in here and mattes. I mean, just, nice just lovely. Love my mattes. I mean, I live on matte eyeshadow. Right. But just yeah. to have that little cube of goldy shimmer in the middle, just to kind of make your eyes pop now and then when you want them to. Which, exactly. which, which compact shall I use, do you think? I've got here, I've got Damsel. Jezebel, which, which is... Uh, Jezebel. Sort of, okay, love these, that. That's Jezebel. <laughs> these, kind of, these, kind of cool, these kind of cooler shades. Um, and there is just in the top third there, that, that, that there is just on the end, on the end, right on the end here is a nice kind of minky, grey, peachy tone. Perfect. That is yeah, so my colour, that one. Tease. And that's great. And, and do you know what, Liz? I would just go all over the moving part of the eyelid with that colour. The moving nice. part, okay. Yeah, so just think about that. That's it, exactly that. Just onto the moving part of the lid. Yeah, perfect. And that goes on nice really color. well, really easy. What we call a colour wash. Just just wash the colour all over the eyelids. Yeah. You know, I don't think eye, eyeshadow needs to be complicated. You can just find a great colour and wash over. Yeah. And then what you can do is actually you can drop down a colour here to this slightly deeper colour. Down one. And mm -hmm. then what I would do is I would take a little bit yeah, of that just onto that outside corner of the lid. Okay, I'm going to use one of Ruby's so, brushes here. And do you know what I would do is I would always chin up kind of looking down, you know, so that you can see your eyelids. Yeah, that's it. That's okay. It. That's it. That's it, yeah. And it's almost like you're looking up your nostrils. Right. But then you can see, you can see yeah. all of your eyelids, you know. The, and the mistake a lot of women make is that kind of, they kind of close one eye, do that kind of weird, broken, dull thing, right? Yeah. And, and it oh. never goes on as smoothly as keeping your eyes open and just raising your brows up a little bit. I love that brush, isn't that great? That's one of Ruby's, you know Ruby Hammer? But yeah, I do, yeah. She's such a cutie. Yeah. I caught up with her last week, actually. I haven't seen her for years, and it was so nice. And we worked out that I think we first met each other about just over 30 years ago. Obviously in <laughs> kindergarten, obviously. Course, you know, not working on a job or anything. Six. Quite right. <laughs> um, I remember the, 
a Ruby and Millie brand launching in yeah. Selfridges and yeah. being so going down there on the day and buying a cream blush that I used for years actually at first. Yeah. That, 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 yeah, it was 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 great. She's just got a few little things. I mean, mostly accessories, but lovely things, lovely quality, and she's just so calm and genuine, Ruby. You know. and, and she really has this lovely sort of simplistic approach to makeup as well, yeah. which is so refreshing. You know, it, yeah. uh, a lot of women, I think, have been... Isn't it interesting that there's more information out there than ever before on makeup, and yet women are as much, if not more, confused than, yes. they, than they've ever been, right? Yeah. This contouring and, and, and baking mm. concealers and three yeah. or four products on the eyebrows, right? Yes. Um, and I, I, you know, I, I like that idea, like I said before, and a Ruby fan and a couple of makeup artists that I love as well. This mm. idea of it just being very, very simple, like we've done on your eyes today, yeah. a car wash over the eyelid, a couple of products. Tell, tell me about these lovely things, because this arrived and it's a box of three of them. Um, yeah, I was, I was watching. I was watching uh, your IG live last week, actually, and I know that you do use an eyeshadow stick. I do. A, yeah. A cream eyeshadow stick. Yeah. Um, so again, the idea here was something that was very quick, very very simple, and I often advise women to just pick one of these colours. I think uh, actually, what might be nice for you. What do you think would be good? Be go, there's a matte brown one. This called hot chocolate. Have you got that? Hot chocolate. Let me just see. It's like a like a matte brown colour like that. Like, oh, like that. Uh, mm. Yes. Of three. Got that. Of the three, I've got pink champagne. Yeah. I've got cinnamon swirl. Cinnamon swirl, and so this one must be hot chocolate. There we go. By the process of illumination. Okay, so so there is um, a little pencil sharpener on the end, but it looks like yours is nice and sharp. Oh, so there is. How cute is that? I know. I was just thinking uh, to myself, this is great, but how do I sharpen it? <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit hidden away there, yeah. Really so, cute. Have a little go on your hand. Have, just have a little test. I always say to women, just have a little go with the product on. Ooh. Well, so you that is so it soft. Out. It just like, it? there's no pressure at all. It's like, just it's just on. hovering over the eyelid. And Amazing. then you'll just be able to blend it with a finger. I love that idea of just being able to wash it on, blend it with a finger, and then these, these are waterproof, so that'll go on, and that'll, 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 be, that'll be there tomorrow. You'll still have a smoky eye in the morning. Love that idea. So you can just pop that on, and then just blend it a little bit with your finger to just intensify the outside. Yeah, lovely, very nice. And nice. you can even run just a little bit underneath, so if you just pinch the cheekbone, you'll be able to just run a little bit into the lower lashes as well. Yeah, lovely, great. You see, it's just the tiniest hint, isn't it? But it just gives a little bit of definition. It's not scary. Yeah. I was saying to our friends here, actually, that, you know, with people having to wear masks if they're outside or, you know, going into a shop, what you see are your eyes. And actually, there's this new focus. It's not so much about the lip or whatever. It, it's just, it is just here, isn't it? And that's how you can get your expression and your creativity, perhaps, and feel a bit more done. <laughs> So can I say, top, so eyeliner is, is, is what I think most women are scared of. And a top tip for me, if you want to start wearing eyeliner, you can actually just pop the lid up and pencil underneath the lash there. I love that idea. That, and just taking a very dark colour or a black colour and pushing it up onto the lower part of the lid there. Just yeah. lift it up and just push a little bit up underneath there. That's it. Just where the lashes now, are. And now when you put your mascara on, yeah, look at that. But well, now when you put your mascara on, the mascara will look more intense without it being a very strong eyelinery look. And it just takes yeah. a little bit of practice to just lift the lid up and pop But this is so gentle and that. so, and obviously so safe around the eyes, it's all going to be ophthalmologically tested. Ophthalmologically and tested, all really of that. important. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Gosh, I love that, that so great. much. This is so exciting. I'm going to be sat at my dressing table all day, playing. I hope you've got somewhere glamorous to go after this. Yeah, right. Yeah, I've got, I've got the kitchen. <laughs> and then we can um, <laughs> the dogs, the cats appreciate it. Well, yes. Oh, don't talk to me about my dogs. Honestly, the dogs on the sofa. They, they know they're not supposed to be on the sofa, but they are just yeah, like yeah. endlessly. Well, I end up sitting on the floor. Now, well, tell me about... a 20-week-old puppy. Have you a 20-week-old puppy? Oh, what kind of she's puppy? She's adorable. She's half lab and half red fox cocker spaniel. She's absolutely adorable. 
and we just the problem is we love her too much so she's breaking mm -hmm. all the rules we've got an 11 year old labrador who was never allowed to do anything <laughs> and the puppies come along and the puppies deciding what to watch on netflix or <laughs> a in the kitchen <laughs> lounging around on the bed. No, that's so funny. Do you know, I was recording a podcast the other day um, with an obesity expert looking yeah. at genetics of obesity. And they have discovered that Labradors have an obesity gene which makes them overeat, which is why Labradors are prone to... They don't have a switch-off button. And they you discovered have, that... No, I don't, but I've got friends who have Labradors and they just scoff the whole time. And, you know, and they, they don't seem to know when to stop. And it, it's not their fault. It's genetic. Isn't it's like in some people, Isn't we also have this gene. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Well, or anyone out there who owns the lab will know, will know. I mean, the great thing is that they'll do anything for chicken. You know, <laughs> all of a sudden, as soon as you're holding chicken, they speak perfect English. Yes. If you're not holding food, they have no idea what you're talking about. Oh. As soon as you're holding chicken, what do you need me to do? I'll, I'll do anything. You need a cup of tea, I'll make it for you. Uh, you're yeah, going to have to put pictures of, of your puppy on your stories on Instagram because there's lots lots of requests going on for puppies. Now, tell me about this. This is a gel liner. Um, it says, I am brow liner. Do I use it with this neat little brush? Yeah. Have you done gel line before? Have you done gel liners before? Yeah, I, I think I had a Bobby Brown one kind of back in the day. Okay. But talk me okay. through it. Oh. All right, so um, what, I would, what we're going to do is we're going to do like a push line technique. So that is a, a small pot of black gel eyeliner, okay. right? And the pro makeup artists do these beautiful flicks and all sorts. And it's a cold product for us. Lots of makeup artists love to do that. That's not what we're going to do today. We're going to do something a little bit more wearable. You've got, uh, I haven't got, got the brush that you're holding. Let me mimic it. Is this the right else. one, do you think? <laughs> Yes, it is. Because yeah. I can switch it. Liz, Liz, drop it into the gel, and then what I want you to do is take take the brush backwards and forwards on your hand so that you flatten it. Does Ooh. that make sense? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. No, flat, totally. Can you see what I'm gel. doing here? Flatten so I've, I've, I've so picked up some of the gel, and then I'm just flattening exactly. it. Exactly. Flatten, flatten it, exactly. Now, what you sort of want to do is you sort of want to push that... Forget about drawing along. What you want to do is almost dot it at the root of your lashes. Okay. So almost kind of push that right in on the outside edge and just dot it right into into the root of the lash. Oh, nice. Exactly. And what you're going to do is kind of join the dots up a little bit. And if you want to, just kind of concentrate a little bit more on that outside edge. Yeah. Exactly. Again, a waterproof formulation, and gel liner doesn't have to be about doing that smooth artistic flick, but about kind of building density just at the roots of the lash. Very good. Yeah, yeah. And could but, I use it on, yeah. on brows as well, or would it be too much, do you think? Is that the ebony? Is that the black colour that you've what got What have I got there? here? It I've got... Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't no, that's going to be too, too dark. I'm going to have to get the brown one, because I do like a little bit through my, my um, brows. That's it, and then that's it. Just pushing it, pushing in, yeah. And we call that push lining. So you push just lining. pushing the liner Learn down, something new. down the lash, so that it, it is it is hitting that sort of top edge of the eyelid. Um, and again, that, that technique that I showed you before for real intensity, and we won't do it today. I would also tight line up inside the lash there. So if you were mm. going out in the evening, where we've kind of popped it up, that's it. Yeah. Oh, very good. Very good. I see I can do it without without holding my eyelid. You're very good at keeping your eyes still. You've had your makeup done a bit before, right, as well? Have I've, had, I've had my makeup done a lot, you know, over the years, and I think you just yeah. get used to just, you just relax into it because you just know that <laughs> when somebody comes at you with a brush and they're going to stab your eye, that actually it's okay. <laughs> just keep breathing. What, what happens is normally I, I can feel women, they just hold their breath as I get close to them. Yeah, that's very good. Yeah, I like that a lot. And that's going to stay put, is it? That's waterproof and smudge-proof? That is one of our most waterproof formulations, which is, which is the reason why it's such a big seller for us. You know, I think, uh, I think nice. you know, having, having makeup perform that way, you know, women are looking for makeup that you can put on at the beginning of the day and forget about. Totally. Right? You want to put your makeup on, you want to get on with your life, you want to get home in the evening, yeah. get home in the evening... Yeah, well, okay. Walk, walk to a different room, maybe. Walk to a different room. And then what you want to... 
and you want your makeup to look the same way at the end of the day. Yeah. And, you know, I'm yeah. kind of topping it up halfway through. So a lot of the formulations that we do are waterproof and long wear. A lot of women suffer with kind of watery eyes as well, or or they have their problems with allergies, right? Yeah. So that makeup will travel around. Yeah. So we work really hard at finding great. This I love, by the way. This. You did a great demonstration with that last week. Huh? Yeah, so. this, this. Look at this teeny weeny little brush. It's like a little fairy brush. And this is your gel uh, brow brow, shape. brow shaper. Yeah. There we go. Brow Defining shape. brow gel. Brow gel. And, and the idea is you can't make a mistake with it. Here no. we go. Famous last words. No. But exa exactly that. So what you're doing is just pushing the brow up. Uh, that's it. And, and I like... And I, I, I saw that you do it the same way. You want to try and push all the hair sort of upwards and outwards to just create more yeah. distance between lash line and brow line. Just okay. That looks fantastic. But also, what and it's also, doing is it's depositing a little bit of colour. So for those who are going a little bit grey, uh, yeah. like me, you know, it's yeah. not just the hairs on our scalp, but actually, you know, facial hair as well. And just right. having a little bit of colour through your brow just makes the face look more youthful yeah. as well as there combing is, them up so so juliet my wife has this great technique where sometimes you get a little blob of gel on the end of the brush she even uses that little bit pushes that into oh. her brows almost like a pencil to get more color in yes. and then she brushes that back out again as well that's it that's it look at that that looks great that looks so much better in an instant yeah and, and again just it's so easy, you know, that, that was a real part of our DNA, was that we were going to yeah. keep it very uncomplicated. We were going to keep the brand mm. very, very small to products that women would really use, you know, sure. on a daily basis. Yeah. And I love, I love this fluffier brow as well. That brow was looking very strong for a long time, right? It was getting a bit scary. Too, yeah, too, like, drawn. You know, they were just looking like they'd been you know, stuck on with... Which can be amazing. Uh, and, but sometimes you meet people and the first thing you notice about them is their perfect eyebrows, right? You think, yeah. okay, wow, well, you've really... Uh, yeah, them. and for ageing, I think it's it's not so good. Your mascara, I have to say, gets top marks from me. I'm very Thank picky you. when it comes to mascara. I've used the same mascara, you know, for a long, long time. And I've been using <laughs> yours. Who do, you, who do you use? Tell me, who do you use? Okay, so I, for years and years and years, for the first kind of 20 years of my makeup life, I used a Lancome Definicil. Of course. Then, uh, when the tube technology came along, I have been using the Clinique High Impact Curling Mascara, which I love. Yeah, and I've been faithful stuff. to it for about, well, probably another 20 years, maybe. Um, and then along comes Delilah. It's like, ooh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, those the two that you named are big hitters, so I'm, I'm I am um, honoured that uh, that you like this one. No, you know, I seriously, and, do. And it doesn't mascara. shift. You know, my issue with mascara is it tends to creep on it me, shifts, and right. then I end up with panda eyes. And you know, I'm always very conscious of dark circles under my eyes. Anyway, so the last thing I ever want is a mascara that's going to end up down here when it should be up yeah. here. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's a, 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 often that's a sort of anatomical thing. So sometimes pe when they close their eyes, people's lashes will touch just underneath their eye. Some, people, some, people, some women say to me, how come my mascara always ends up underneath my eyes? And if I get them to close their eyes and I look, I can actually see where their top lashes are touching, touching. underneath oh. their eye. And on some women, you know, like I say, anatomically, that's not yeah. the case. So often you need these mascaras, like the ones that you've been using, that will set a little bit better and stay in place. So that if your lashes are touching underneath your eye, it's not smudging. But this particular mascara, we wanted to create something buildable. So what, what I'd love you to try, Liz, is later on today, okay. after dinner, put some more on as if you were going out in the evening. Ooh. You often can't do that. You can't, no. I would not risk that with my other ones. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't do that with the Clinique one. Because it would flake or... or yeah, it would. Or, or. Yeah. Okay, so this, this has this sort of, uh, sort of reforming formulation where you can apply a little bit more just before you're going out in the evening and you'll get even more drama without that sort of um, sticky, spiky feeling that you would get. Nice. Um, I will definitely try that. But my eyes have just popped that. with that. I that love it. I tend not to do my lower lashes, is that right? I find it's a bit too it, much it, for me. It's just preference, especially if your makeup travels a little bit. Then yeah. One of the things I'm definitely 
say is, is don't, don't do the lemon ashes yet. But that looks really lovely. And then this, again, is genius. I love a lip gloss. Um, but they never seem to last on me. No. This one lasts. Yeah. I don't know what you put gel. in it, but it's like... It's a gel. It's a different formulation. Again, it's a, it's, it's a gel formulation, so it feels very cushiony and very smooth. But that is a brand new colour that we just launched. It is, at the moment, is only in the new lip wardrobe kit. Mm. We, will, we will bring it out full-time in the range because it's so it's wearable. It's great. So what else is yeah. in the kit, just so that people know if they want to get this shade? Yes. Indeed, in the kit is the beautiful um, mink lip gloss. Okay, so that's what uh, this one is. This is the lip gloss. That's what that is, yeah. yeah. Uh, there is the uh, Muse lipstick. Um, okay. Really beautiful, creamy. Again, a nice nude, nice wearable colour. Very nice um, lipstick. I'm not sure if I've got uh, that. Uh, and we're fanatical about, about packaging. So, so uh, you know... We love it when our customers write to us and tell us how much they love it. Oh, I do have it. it. Look, I have it here. Yeah. They feel nice in the hand. You know, we finish everything in this lovely sort of that. It's a, love, it's a very wearable colour, this. Isn't it? I yeah. think it would go with virtually everything and everybody. It's, that, that, I've, I've, I'll put it over my lipstick good, so you can see. Everyone needs a good nude lipstick in, the, in their in Yeah, their you do. Bag. It's classic. And then there's, there's a matching lip liner as well. Uh, nice. Buff. Um, so you can wear them together or you can wear them on their own. Sometimes I like a lip liner or just a little bit of lip gloss over the top. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that looks great. Doesn't that look lovely? I'm uh, feeling good. So what? <laughs> I, I said I don't know why I sound so surprised, but I think <laughs> you, you look fantastic. Oh, thank you. Well, thanks to you. And thank you. You've given us all 20% off, which is super generous. Such a pleasure. And that's everything on your website. You're delilacosmetics.com, are you? Delilacosmetics.com, yeah, exactly right. Yeah, Brilliant. Um, and w where do we find you on Instagram? I know that loads of people are going to want to go over and follow you. We are, we are at Delilah Cosmetics. Okay. Yeah. And then I am Rupert underscore Kingston, rather anonymously. <laughs> I love that, I love that. So so you're kind of the, the slightly back of house so your Tuesday tips, will you be doing tips on Instagram tomorrow? I am going to film one right now, uh, in fact, just be, and in fact, I didn't film it because I thought I was going to have a chat with you because I knew it would give me some inspiration, <laughs> and what I think I might do is just talk a little bit about, uh, about eye makeup, because you've done lovely. such a lovely job with it today. Oh, so I do thanks. it Tuesday, every couple, every couple of Tuesdays, and it's normally just me and the camera. Fabulous. Fabulous. Well, I shall be tuning in. Rupert, thank you thank so you. much. Wish you Such massive pleasure. success with your brand. I think it's great. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. You, so much. thank you so much for, for having us on. It was, it was really, really lovely to meet you. Oh, I, 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 well, I, hopefully I, we'll meet in I, real life. Hopefully I can come well, and see yeah, your puppy. Right. When the world goes back to normal, <laughs> that would be nice, wouldn't it? Hopefully very soon. Lots of love. Thank you. Thanks Bye. So much. Bye. Okay, bye. Oh, wasn't that so much fun? Oh, I'm feeling better now. <gasps> I tell you what I forgot to do. I forgot to put my Annie headband on. I had it all here ready. Annie at Sanson Reed. I got these just before Christmas, do you remember? And um, they are just brilliant. I think I got so carried away. I was so excited that I forgot to, um, to pull that back. But yeah, I was going to wear that one, which, because she's still given us 10% off all her headbands. And yes, this is a uh, Annie dress. I think she might be out of stock. But um, she's also somebody who's worth following on Instagram. So Sanson Reed is her um, her handle, if you like. And yes, she gives us 10% off all the accessories. So this is the one that I will often use, actually, as I'm doing my makeup. And then I thought if I wanted to zhuzh things up a bit because I'm wearing an animal print dress. Again, you see, I could just, if I was just doing my little Zoom calls... You just need to do this bit, don't you? You can still sit in your tracksuit bottoms and your slippers and nobody's any the wiser, but this bit looks great. <laughs> anyway, let's see. Before we go, let me crack on with just a couple of um, questions and messages. Um, oh, Kim on Facebook says, how much does HRT play towards your skin looking great, I wonder? Hugely. Hugely. My skin was transformed when I started replacing my oestrogen. I've talked about this before, uh, but very simply, the reason is oestrogen is a key 
um, ingredient for the collagen and the elastin fibers that keep our skin uh, springy and soft and fresh and youthful looking. And as we lose it, you know, we lose estrogen from all over our bodies. We use it from our bones, which is why you can get achy joints. We use it from our brain, from our brain cells, the estrogen receptors in our brain, which is why mood changes, anxiety is heightened, memory is lost, you know, all of those things. And a side effect, one of the good side effects of HRT, one of the many, uh, which we don't really often talk about, is, is the beauty side, is the fact that your skin suddenly becomes, you know, more youthful because it has more estrogen, kind of plumping it up. And I don't know if you saw the Instagram live that I did with the American gynecologist and obstetrician called Rebecca Booth, Dr. Rebecca Booth. She and her sister are the founders of a really interesting estrogen-based skincare brand in America called the Ven Effect, Ven as in Venus, Ven Effect. And she was talking about estrogen receptors on the skin, which is why you can look for estrogen in certain formulations of skincare. And uh, I forget when that uh, Instagram Live went up it was before Christmas but you can find it if you want to want to find it on my um, Instagram grid if you just scroll back you'll you'll hear me uh, you'll see the little label that says estrogen and skincare and anyway she was talking about the kind of anthropology of aging and saying that one of the reasons why they think that we have estrogen receptors in our skin is because obviously if you're looking at you know purely just you know humans being here to procreate and create the next you know the next generation it's an outward sign to to the males that we're still fertile and still producing estrogen and still able to have children um, because they can just tell you know take one look and go oh yep you know she's she's up for a bit of child rearing uh, and then, you know, we lose it later because, you know, frankly, if you're talking to an anthropologist, I'll say, well, you know, once you hit, you know, your reproductive years have gone, you've served your usefulness, that's, that's it. You can, you know, you can shuffle off now. And of course now, thankfully, that is very, very different. Our life expectancy is, I think, is it 84 for women in the UK? So in fact, we're likely to have many more years without our periods, you know, post fertility than with them. So it's a really interesting discussion and, you know, that whole HRT thing. I am going to be talking much more about menopause and perimenopause and all of that on Wednesday, uh, particularly on my Instagram. I, I, I did a little question last Wednesday talking about many perimenopause and saying, you know, who would like to have more chats on this? And there was a, just a tsunami of... Uh, comments that came in saying yes yes we want to have more discussions on this so yeah there will be more on my Instagram particularly on that um, which foundation did you put on today that was from Denise on Facebook and that was the Yves Saint Laurent one it's in my Instagram I've, I've put links on my Instagram today because everyone was asking about it so this is one Kerry September actually recommended this one um, it's an Yves Saint Laurent one there's also a Chanel one which I like a lot uh, I tend to kind of chop and change a bit. Um, uh, la, 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 la. What would be the next best thing for me with HRT? I live with cancer. I need to keep my estrogen levels low. Okay, so um, I am going to be doing a podcast, actually. I'm hopefully going to have it out this Friday because Dr. Louise Newson has just written with a young cancer survivor um, who had a very early menopause in her teens due to cancer and they've written an amazing book on help and there are lots of resources lots of lots of helpful stuff so um, I'm going to be putting that hopefully uh, the the young lady is called Ellie she looks like a real cutie and I want to try and grab her and record something with her and talk about this for my podcast on Friday so I hope that will be helpful but meantime do go to menopausedoctor.co.uk because it's on her website uh, this is from Helen on Instagram. Do you have any recommendations for multivitamins for teenage girls and help with PMS? When I was 15, I suffered so badly. It wasn't until I started with my supplements that things really improved dramatically. Interesting. Well, if you've been watching my Instagram recently, you will have seen that I was been, have been talking about nutrigenomics with Emma Bezik, the founder of Life Code GX. And that's when we discovered that Brella, you know, my, um, well, she's no longer a teen, actually, she's just turned 20. Uh, but she has genetically um, less ability to process vitamin D. 
So, and she was here talking about it actually last week. So she now takes a lot more vitamin D, 10 times the amount of recommended dose because she needs it because she doesn't have the genes that process it. And that's helped her enormously. So I think it, you know, it may be a bit of trial and error. I mean, if you can do the genetic genome testing, amazing. Uh, but I think there are certain things that can help. So I found evening primrose oil really helpful. I think we've got a Liz Loves actually with Ephemol. Ephemol is a great brand. Um, looking at evening primrose oil. Evening primrose oil was one of the first books I wrote actually. It was about evening primrose oil all those years ago. Let me just check Ephemol. Um, I think they've got an offer maybe on our website. Go over to Liz Our Wellbeing and have a look. Um, but yeah, the GLA, the gamma linolenic acid in evening primrose oil, has been shown to be effective for some with PMS. But you do need to take quite a high strength, like all these things, and you do need to take it for, I think, at least three to four months um, to see a difference. But certainly worth trying. But do go for a good brand. You know, I, I would trust a brand like Ephemol, to be honest. I know that their, their clinical research is very good. Um, Oh, gosh. Okay, so Anne on Facebook says, which mascara did you use today, Liz? Uh, there are two on the website. Okay, so this is the Delilah, and it is Intense, Intense Day to Night. That's the one that I used, and that's the one that I have been using, actually. Interestingly, you know, it's always that kind of thing, isn't it? What do you reach for? And I've now got, you can't see my dressing table, actually, but I've got lots and lots of different makeup bits all over it because I've been being sent lots of things. I'm trying lots of things. And it's the ones that actually make it into my real makeup bag. They're the ones that I go, oh, that's a tick. That's a win, you know, and definitely I'd say that was that was good. I love everything I've tried, actually. Really, really genuine. Um, there we go. So Makeup Monday. Just a quick note here. We do still have a few of my little heart earrings left. They've been selling like hotcakes, I think, because of Valentine's coming up on so yeah, little filigree hearts, they are based on the mangrove leaf and they're made with 100% fair trade. Um, they're 24 karat gold vermeil, if you can see on there. Sorry if my light's a bit bright on Facebook. Um, but these are the rose gold, which I love. I just find rose is just such a pretty colour next to the skin. Um, or we have yellow gold or the rhodium, which are the silver, and they're 30% off at the moment with mangrove. That's what you need to use as the code on lizeldjewelry.com. Mangrove, which is the mangrove leaf. And they come in a really pretty little black and gold box with a little authenticity card and everything. So lovely present if you want to drop some hints for somebody perhaps or pass them on maybe to um, a, a special daughter or girlfriend or whoever. Anyway, that is it. So my goodness, I can't believe the time already. It zipped by, hasn't it? Really, just I was having too much fun with all that makeup. So yeah, so DelilahCosmetics.com, they have given us 20% off everything at the moment, which is just great. Ruby Hammer, these were her lovely um, little makeup brushes that just clipped together. Still got 15% off all of her things. Um, do keep your comments coming. I'll be back on Instagram a little bit later, so I will check. Thank you for all the hearts. Thank you for all the comments and questions as well on Facebook. I'll pop over there in a bit and um, check on those as well. But I hope you've enjoyed today. I hope it's been a nice little break, a little bit of a switch off from all the bad news. We'll have some positivity here. And uh, I feel ready now for my Zooms. I've got a couple of Zoom calls this afternoon. So they're going to be going, wow, you made a special effort just for us. And I go, yeah, yeah, really. Anyway, have a lovely day. Take care. Sending lots of love. Bye-bye.